Uh, welcome everyone. Appreciate you coming to today's UW System career track. Um, my name is Courtney Pearson. I am a career advisor with the School of Education Career Center at UW-Madison. And um, today, as you can see on our slide, we are fortunate to have DeForest Area School District as our employer featured this week. And we have our, our uh, the HR director, excuse me, the HR director, uh, Nate Yeager on the call. And it's gonna be an awesome session. And so just remember everything's recorded. Um, and so if you have a great experience and your friend missed today's session, you can find the recording of this session um, on YouTube following today's track. So just a couple of housekeeping things before we move in um, and transition over to Nate talking about DeForest. Um, we will have in the chat a link to our official registration form. We realize you registered in Handshake to get here, but we do ask that you fill out this participation form. Um, once again, the link will be in the chat. It's especially important for some of our students. Uh, if you're, for instance, a pointer from Stevens Point, uh, remember you are required to fill out this form in order to receive your pro event credits. If you like what you see today and you're curious about what other Wisconsin employers have been featured this semester and past semesters, don't forget to check out the official UW System Career Tracks event page. The URL is in the upper left hand corner on the screen. Um, you can find out how to register for employers coming up. You'll see links to previous sessions. So that'll take you to the YouTube channel. Um, we have a great lineup folks. So hopefully you like what you see and you tell all your friends and you keep coming back. because it's, it's pretty awesome getting to feature all these Wisconsin employers. Um, and I just wanna mention that, you know, next week we have Oshkosh featured, uh, our featuring enterprise, uh, October uh, 27th, starting at 12 noon. Um, once again, UW-Madison is hosting today, but I've got to give a shout out uh, to Haley Carr out of UW-Superior, who's been an absolute rock with all of her tech. Um, and so it's, it's thanks to Haley that we are able to have a smooth event here on Zoom. All right, so we're gonna move on over and um, we're gonna do the live polling and then um, answer these two questions that are coming up on the screen because it would be nice for everyone, including Nate, uh, to know where are you all coming from? So feel free to fill in on the poll. And um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so that we can transition over to Nate. So hang tight. Wild Whitewater and Madison folks here. Excellent. Is it all right if I take over and share my screen, Courtney? Yep, go right ahead. All right, terrific. Well, thank you for the introduction. Uh, again, Nate Yeager from the DeForest Area School District, and I'm going to share a little bit about the DeForest Area School District, but also K 12 education in general. So, I'll, I'll, although you'll learn a lot about us here, I also want to encourage you to keep an open mind to um, all occupations in K-12 education. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and run through a couple of slides. So here's my contact information and I do want to encourage you if you have any questions about potential opportunities here in DeForest or for um, elsewhere in K-12 education or anything that I cover today, please, please, please reach out to me via phone or email. I am uh, readily available and happy to answer any questions. So let's talk about the DeForest area. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with us, we are located just northeast of Madison, Wisconsin, our state capital. 
but you can literally see the dome from our community. So we're just outside. We can actually have a sliver of, of Madison within our school district. We have over 4,000 of the most amazing kids you'll ever meet. Uh, we serve grades 4K through 12th grade, uh, and we have over 550 employees. And I'll share a little bit more about what what makes up who make up those 550 employees here in a bit. Uh, we have six amazing buildings, three brand new elementary buildings uh, that are either new or newly renovated. We have an intermediate school that just opened a couple of months ago. So uh, I'm not exaggerating when I say it is one of the finest uh, education buildings in, in the state of Wisconsin. It's, it's incredible. A uh, newly renovated middle school and a newly renovated high school. So our uh, a lot of facilities here in, in the forest to serve our over 4,000 students. Here's a little bit about us. Uh, we strive to engage, challenge, and inspire all students to pursue their full potential. Um, our vision statement listed below just gives you a sense of what, what our commitment here is in the forest. Part of being a great place to work and a great place to learn is that ongoing commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. This is a statement that you'll find on all of our job postings. Uh, it's one that you'll find on our website. It's one that our board reads at the beginning of every board meeting. And it's something that we have a, an ongoing and continued commitment to. So one thing about K-12 education that I, I don't think a lot of people realize is we do a lot more than just educating students, more than just teachers and administrators. We have a $49 million operating budget, over 550 employees serve a couple of meals a day. Uh, our buildings include not just your standard school buildings, but maintenance facilities, aquatic facility, performing arts center, beautiful stadium. Um, we have all sorts of different clubs, activities, and opportunities for our students and ways for our community to engage with us. Uh, we really do take pride in being the focal point of, of our community. So we, we serve beyond just the, the students here. I think a lot of people just think of teachers, principals, and, and maybe instructional aides when they think of the school system. But we really have, from the operational to the instructional side, full-time, part-time, substitute, casual, regular, you name it, uh, we employ all sorts of different folks. So here's a look at instruction and support. Um, the the left-hand side are the positions that I think most people are familiar with and think of when they think of K-12 education. Uh, some of the other student services that we provide, you might not think of, like interpreters and translators, OT, PT, counselors, school psychs, nurses, health room assistants. Uh, we do a ton in the, the medical field um, that I, I don't think a lot of people think of. And then there's the whole operational side, which is what I like to think of as the other half of what we do. Uh, business services, our department, human resources, food service, B&G, technology, office support. It takes a lot of people to operate the the facilities and the infrastructure and the services that, that we provide. So again, when you think of K-12 education, please know that there's a lot more beyond uh, just classroom teachers and, and school, school building positions. So one of the benefits of being in a school system is the, the school year calendar. We have really family friendly work schedules. Uh, we have both year-round and school year positions. So I, I know, again, a lot of people think of the school year positions, but we, we're running, we're running year-round. I think some of the benefits of the schedules that you get with a, a school system is they're a lot more predictable and consistent. You can count on having your, your holidays off. You, you don't have to worry about getting called in on the weekends. Uh, we have breaks built into the calendars that I think uh, align with uh, when a lot of people like to be off, paid holidays, vacation time, and really generous leave policies. I like to think that we promote a healthy work-life balance. Another uh, aspect of 
for the forest area school district. I think public education in general is that I think we still have very generous employee benefits. So here's a quick glimpse of our employee benefits page and you can see our benefit package includes health, dental, life, short-term disability, long-term disability, um, a multitude of different retirement options. We're a WRS employer, which means we're part of the pension system. So that's something that all employees participate in. And then we also have other elective retirement benefit options like a 403B, 457 plan. Um, the health insurance is something that I really like to promote here in, in the forest. We have ports is our network. It's a super accessible network in the, the Dane County area. The district pays for 90% of the, the premium, which I think if you're looking at occupations outside of, of education, they, you know that would be considered a, a really high contribution rate. Um, our employees are eligible for full-time benefits at 30 hours. Uh, we also have a uh, uh, high deductible health plan, and that's a pretty, becoming an increasingly common plan for folks to have. In our case, we have a $6,000 deductible, which sounds super scary, uh, but the district funds 5,500 of that. So we're putting $5,500 into an account in your name that if you need it, great, that's what it's there for. Uh, if you don't, that money's yours and you take it with you. So our um, employee satisfaction ratings around our benefits have, have been higher than they've, they've ever been. Um, so another consideration when assessing uh, employment opportunities. So to give you a, a glimpse, we're in the middle of, of the, I shouldn't say the middle, at the beginning of the school year, we kicked off in September. Uh, we, we still have immediate employment opportunities. We are looking for full-time building substitutes. We're paying $210 a day and guaranteeing people five days a week. So you might be assigned to an, an elementary building and you'd be guaranteed five days a week of work at a, a really good rate of pay. Um, something interesting about uh, being a substitute teacher, you used to have, a, have to have a teaching degree, uh, then it was a bachelor's degree, and now it's an associate's degree. So you would be eligible to have a, uh, a substitute teaching permit. It could fill in one of these roles um, with the, an associate's degree and the, the appropriate um, teacher substitute permit, which we would be able to help you uh, support you in getting. We also have special education assistant positions starting at 17, 12 an hour. Uh, these are anywhere from full-time benefit eligible to part-time, depending on uh, what the candidate's looking for. So we have multiple opportunities available. Um, also, these are positions where we provide a, a great level of training and support. We really want to make sure that uh, people are successful in these roles. I know it can be intimidating taking on a role if you haven't been in the classroom um, since the last time you were there as a student. Um, so a great opportunity and, and one that gives you great insight into what it's like serving in a school building. We also have part-time recess playground supervisor roles uh, starting at 1475 custodial substitutes. Uh, we, we just opened an amazing aquatics facility attached to our high school, and we need lifeguards, fitness instructors. Uh, so if you're at all interested in picking up some, some shifts or some money on the side, please, uh, please reach out. Uh, we'd, we'd be happy to put you to work. As far as applying for positions, um, we use WECAN, the Wisconsin Education Career Access Network. It is what I like to describe as the common currency, the common job posting board for K-12 education. So what's fantastic about this is you can create a profile, super easy, you just put in uh, basic profile information and you can search for employment opportunities by license, by region. If you're only interested in searching in the the CESA 2 or Dane County area, you can filter your search. And it's a great way to um, cast a, a really wide net and see what opportunities are out there, but also filter down the, the, a specific uh, type of position, specific region, or even specific job that you're looking for. So we post all of our job opportunities on, on WeCan. 
most of the other uh, K-12 school districts in the state of Wisconsin do as well, I would encourage you to uh, check that out, create an account, and, and just take a look at the different opportunities that are available on the camp. Uh, if you have any questions or hit, hit any uh, bumps or hiccups along the way when you're creating your account, give me a call. I have a pretty neat, clean, one-page sheet to show you how to navigate the camp. It's, um, it's a fantastic system. So the other point I want to emphasize is that you know, your success is our success. And we realize that with all of our new employees that um, we really want to make sure that you are going to um, not only be successful in your role, but that you find it rewarding, challenging, and that you are, you know, employment is a, a two-way street. You, you want to, we certainly want to find folks who are going to serve our students and community, but we also want you to have high job satisfaction. And to do that, we have a very comprehensive onboarding procedure. We have mentorship programs for our certified positions, building buddy programs and job shadowing opportunities for our support positions. Uh, for all of our roles, we have ongoing professional development that is built into uh, our, our respective roles. And then just promoting a collaborative team environment. Uh, whichever department you would be joining, uh, you would be part of a team. And I, I think that's something that a, a lot of people look for in employment, and it's something that we do particularly well here in the forest. So that's a little bit about the DeForest Area School District, some of the employment opportunities that we have, a uh, pathway to go about learning more. I'm hoping to carve out some time, and I'm hoping that you have some questions for me. And please, they could be about the DeForest Area School District in general or um, more specific questions. That was awesome. Thank you, Nate. Um, for those who maybe joined us a little after Nate um, kicked it off, just know that uh, you you should fill out the registration form. We realize you registered in Handshake, but we do need you to fill out the registration form. The link um, is found in the chat. Also, if you have any questions for Nate, you can put them in the chat as well, or you could ask it yourself by turning your audio on. Um, but feel free uh, to have your questions put in the chat and I can certainly read them off on your behalf. Um, I do have a question for you, Nate, and it always seems that I get asked this as a, a career advisor. What are you looking for? You know, what knowledge, what experiences, characteristics, skill sets of, you know, what do you find or what do you look for in a quality candidate um, and what you would like to see a prospective teacher speak on in an interview with you? That's a great question. And I will say it's kind of contingent upon the position that we're filling. But one thing that's a non-negotiable is you have to like kids. Like we are here to support students and being uh, reaching their full potential. That's that's one thing that this position that that genuine care for for students is something that that we look for. Um, also, a, a strong equity lens. Doesn't matter what position you're applying for, you won't have you won't have an interview experience where we aren't trying to learn a little bit more about uh, your experiences working with diverse um, students populations. Uh, we're also looking for people who are motivated, people who are reliable, people who are energetic, good team members. Like I mentioned, everything that we do, every department centers on some type of collaboration or, or team effort. So those are all, those are all things we'd be trying to draw out in that interview process. Yeah, thank you. Um, another question that I always get is what are your what does your interview process look like? Like how many rounds do you do? Phone screening? Do you do the dreaded like record yourself speaking and then you have to submit the recording? Like how, what's your interview process look like? Another great question. So that is it. It's across the board. I would say the consistencies that we have in our process would be you would apply on weekend. Uh, there would be some type of. Um, competency or proficiency at 
activity that you'd be doing and there would be a, a formal interview. Well, one thing that we've learned over the course of the last couple of years is that virtual engagements like this are super convenient. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have really expanded on how we go about getting to know the people applying uh, for positions in the Forest Area School District. So while it used to be more of a traditional uh, come and meet with the interview committee of 10, 15 people, uh, you might be welcomed back for a second interview. Now that might look a little bit different, like have a, a virtual experience, virtual interview um, that might be followed up with a, a building tour and a more face-to-face uh, -face interaction. Uh, but yeah, I found that we've been hiring people. One thing with virtual interactions, we've been uh, able to access more candidates. We've, been, we've had more out-of-state applicants, uh, people who otherwise wouldn't have considered you know, I'm not going to drive all the way to the forest for an interview, but if I can arrange a virtual interview, I'd give it stronger consideration. So um, that, yeah. that's what you can expect in, in the forest. Very cool. So the other thing I'll add to that is one thing I think that we do is different. A lot of times with an interview, you show up and you just have questions on the spot. Really, our goal isn't to Put you on the spot to surprise you. We want you to feel comfortable. Um, we just we just want to get to know you. We want to get to know you, your experiences, uh, your skills. So I mean, we'll give folks the questions ahead of time. We can try to create an environment that is um, welcoming. I guess you'd say. Yeah, that's really encouraging to hear because I know when I do mock interviews with students, they get very nervous because they don't know what to expect. So it's always nice um, when they're giving a question set, question, uh, question set ahead of time. Um, another question that seems to, to concern a lot of students is when should they apply? Because they don't finish student teaching until like June for many school districts. So do they have to wait until July when they have their license in hand or when, when should they apply? So I would say that's something else that has evolved. And all of, all of you folks out there who are either currently looking for or will soon be looking for employment, you are in a great position. Uh, we have never had more of a need for, for folks across the board in all sectors. So um, I used to, there used to be a real traditional hiring season. We would post in uh, February, interview in you know, March, April, May for the upcoming season. I would say that while there is still that kind of hiring season where we are, are looking for the, to hire a majority of our folks for the following year, uh, it's kind of a, there is no hiring season. Now. It's, it's an ongoing thing. We have multiple certified staff vacancies that we're looking to fill, certified and support vacancies that we're looking to fill um, at any given point in time. So we know that there are uh, semester grants that are, are gonna be on the market looking for employment here. We're gonna make a push to try to recruit some of them. Um, the other thing, we also know that folks are trying to, to build their resumes and learn what they like, what they don't like, we also have a lot of volunteer opportunities where if you want to engage in a different capacity that's not you know, a 40 hour a week job, but you want to learn a little bit more about being in the school systems, you want to uh, expand your horizons, build that resume. That's another way that, that we can help uh, that we uh, have opportunities. Very cool. All right, here's another question. Um, does your district have an AVID program um, and or do you utilize AVID learning strategies? This is why I should have had a, a, a principal here. Okay. Uh, can you tell me more about the acronym AVID? It was the question that was put in the chat. Um, maybe the person, oh, Hi. here we go. Uh, thanks, for hosting more. The event. Uh, thanks for hosting the event today, by the way. Um, yeah, so AVID uh, is an acronym standing for Advancement via Individual Determination. Um, so my experiences with AVID is that this program kind of takes 
students who maybe have um, like roadblocks to being high achieving students or achieving at high levels. And it gives them those extra supports to allow them to do that. Um, and there's also a lot of strategies that you can use just in everyday classes um, in terms of like reading comprehension and literacy and things like that. Um, so I've had really positive experiences with it. So I was just curious if your district utilizes those strategies. That's great to hear. And like I said, that might be a question better suited for our director of curriculum and instruction or one of our principals. I know we have all sorts of different alternative education options. And our goal is to meet our students where they're at and you know the meet the individual needs of our students. So in philosophy, yes, that absolutely aligns with um, how we feel about our role in education here in the forest, whether or not we are implementing Added specifically program, I, I don't know the answer to that. Thank you. I see a question there also about summer opportunities. The answer to that is yes, absolutely. And that could be in the form of uh, summer school teaching support. Um, we have an aquatics facility that runs year round, all sorts of athletics clubs, opportunities taking place. Uh, we have a pretty big grounds and maintenance crew that is busy around the clock in the summer and our, our district offices are, uh, that's, that's actually our busy time of year. So yes, absolutely there are summer opportunities. Very nice. Um, don't, don't forget folks, you can put your questions in the chat uh, for Nate. Another question that I know I always get is, um, do they do students have to put all their practicum experiences as well as their full time student teaching in their resume? Like, what do you like to see um, in the resume document? So I know new grads often view their lack of experience as this huge deficit that they that you have to overcome. When you're applying for jobs, you're applying also against people who have been in the field for a decade plus, and your resume might not be as long as um, someone with more experience. That's, that's not a terrible thing. I want to assure you that you, know, you, you are still going to be given very strong consideration. Uh, one thing I like about, or I find beneficial about new graduates, it's you are fresh out of the classroom. You are just did experience fresh learning and are up to date on best practices. So I, I think there's a lot of benefits to, to your experiences. And if you did have a unique experience and in a practicum in a, in a school that you think is worth mentioning that would um, be worth highlighting to a potential employer, go ahead and list it. Um, but I don't think you have to go ahead and list every single opportunity. We assume that if you went through a traditional teacher prep program that um, you've been in a number of different placements. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I know on our campus and I know elsewhere for teacher prep programs, there's been great discussion about trying to keep our grads in the state and try and highlight how awesome it would be to be a teacher within the state of Wisconsin. Nate, maybe you could speak to why it's great to be a teacher in Wisconsin versus, I don't know, Illinois or any other state um, and, and why they should strongly consider staying in the state of Wisconsin to teach? So I can speak to that from a couple of different perspectives. I, I started my career in education as a classroom teacher at the elementary level. And when I was looking for jobs, that was at a point in time when there would be four or 500 applicants for an elementary teaching job. So I was looking at employment in, in other states and you'd go to job fairs and there would be people from all over trying to recruit. Uh, educators. I think folks who are from Wisconsin, there's a lot of statistics out there on uh, people uh, working and residing within, you know, the 30 miles of where they went to the high school. So we know proximity is important. We know a lot of people have roots and, you know, want, want to stay close by. We have to be able to recruit people in our backyard. It, it pains me to see people from our institutions of higher education in, in Wisconsin, um, leaving K-12 education or, or leaving the state. 
-hmm. I think there are a lot of hidden benefits looking at it from the, the HR perspective. I look at what we've been able to retain in Wisconsin. Uh, those of you who don't remember Act 10, uh, that was a bit of a setback for what it meant to be an educator in, in Wisconsin. But I will say we still have uh, incredible benefits. Uh, every, every now and again, we'll hire someone from Illinois and the salary will be a bit of an adjustment mm -hmm. to them where they, they feel as though our compensation isn't you know, quite what they were making in suburbs of Chicago. But when they learn about our benefits, when they learn about our cost of living, when they learn about even some of the hidden benefits, the post-employment benefits that we offer, um, the pension system is one of the most valuable hidden benefits that you'll find where other states don't have anything anywhere near what we have. And it is something that you will, um, you know, I, I've never talked with a retiree who didn't have a smile on their face after leaving the course. And a lot of that is knowing that you worked to occur and earn a, a very high quality of life in retirement. Mm -hmm. So it is still a great profession to be in, and particularly in Wisconsin. Mm. Yeah, I can say my own mother taught for 32 years, retired when she could. And yeah, it's thanks to her teaching and her pension that she lives a, a nice life now. So yeah, I mean, it's a great benefits for sure. Um, another question, how do you view the recent license change? Will you hire someone with a K-9 license to teach middle school? Uh, so yes, we would. I would say that's been a, a, a give and take, kind of a double-edged sword with licensure requirements. Uh, one hand, uh, we are pushing and advocating for flexibility in licensure. Uh, with a teacher shortage, there are often times where we have a difficult time finding a, a licensed person to fill in in a given role. So on one hand, license flexibility is is for schools to, to meet the, the needs of our kids. On the other hand, um, it does create some, some inconsistencies. You used to be able to count on every single person who you were interviewing to have uh, standard teacher prep experience from an in-state college or institution of higher education. And there was consistency there. You knew, you knew to a degree the, the level of training of the, the person we were hiring. Now there are all sorts of alternate pathways to licensure. Um, so you do have to do a little bit more vetting to you know, get, a, get a gauge of the, the experience that um, those folks have. The, the example I gave of substitute teaching is, is a great example of how that bar has been lowered uh, based on demand. We used to have, have a teaching license that it was a bachelor's degree now it's an associate's degree. And you know what that means is you used to have people who are highly trained educators in the classroom, and now you have um, people with uh, not the same level of training and experience. Long answer, or short answer to your, your question would be yes. Um, we would consider that um, place for sure. Mm -hmm. It also has to do a little bit with your grade configuration. So we have a... Uh, a uh, seven eight building. We used to have a five eight building, and you know it'd be kind of limiting to hire someone whose license was limited, and they couldn't teach every grade level in that building. So it's a factor, but if you hold the the requisite certification, you are your an eligible candidate. Yeah, it's really good to know. Thank you. Um, any other questions that you all have for Nate? Don't want to miss any of them. Please, please, please feel free to reach out, uh, even if it's just a, a casual phone call to learn more about uh, how we might be able to, to help you on your career path. Um, we're happy to do so. Yes, wonderful. Oh, yeah. Um, if you could put your contact information again. Um, Put that in the chat, Nate, that'd be great. No, this has been absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much for your wisdom, Nate. This is 
wonderful. Um, education is a worthwhile career to go into. There's definitely a lot of um, things to consider, licensure being a big part of that. Um, so it's great that we could have Nate representing DeForest and, and of course being a, just a general advocate for Wisconsin schools is absolutely wonderful. So um, make sure you snag Nate's contact information in the chat before we close out today. But I just wanna thank Nate once again. Um, thank you for coming on and talking about DeForest and Wisconsin schools. Thank you, um, Haley from UW Superior helping us out with tech and you know tell, tell your friends um, to come join us again next week when we have Enterprise um, hosted by UW Oshkosh um, right here next Wednesday at, at 12 noon. So thank you, everyone.